Namaste. Today is the best day to discuss one of my pet peeves about literature, about English literature. What is it that always upsets me about the way we discuss genres of literature? The main thing being mythology. This word, this cat categorization of a kind of stories, a genre of stories that some people think may be untrue. To consider a whole civilization and their stories, their traditional stories and calling them false or fake, that's what bothers me. The word mythology, the word myth, the study of myths. What is a myth? What is a myth? I understand that when people do not understand much, you know, as much as we do, because, you know, we consider that um, as time goes by, people learn a little more, you know, every year, every decade, every century, humankind learns a little more about the culture that it lives in or the civilization that it lives in or the world that it lives in. So I understand in the times 1400s when uh, the word myth was coined or we, un we first read about it, you know, we first noticed that it was coined in the 1400s. I get it, you know, that people in those days probably didn't think that uh, the stories of the, the Greek civilization ha told its uh, future generations um, held any water. Fine. So they said, oh, that's a myth. So the study of myths, mythology, the stories that surrounded all characters that became superhuman, and had, uh, you know, forces that we don't see naturally as possible, they all fell into the genre of mythology. Okay. Well, the ancient Greeks, they're not there to defend themselves, are they? They were not there in the 1400s. They're not there now. But then, how does one continue to call anything that we don't understand as a myth? So generations of literatures have been using anything, you know, they, they put anything that they don't understand or they personally believe as fake into the box of mythology. Now, the white man came to rule over India, colonize all the various countries, you know, from the tiny little country, England, they went all around and you know, saying that the sun would never set on the British Empire. And wherever they went, they found stories that, according to them, couldn't be. So they said that was mythology. And they came across this Hindu mythology stories that were revered by the people of the land of the Indian subcontinent. 
in those days the Indian subcontinent. And not just the Indian subcontinent, elsewhere too, the same stories. But what we try to prove as mythology today was proved was what we see today is that the the heart of the man the heart of the civilization that's what is true it's what the heart believes in that's true one will always agree that there cannot be a person who has 10 heads. How could a person have 10 heads? It's physically impossible. But can we not just move off just, just a bit further and think, could that be a way of explaining to the child of the next generation that they lived a man with immense prowess, that there lived a man who could think and act and be like 10 men. He was not an ordinary man, a man who could think like 10 people. Of course, we know that there can't ever be a person who has a head of an elephant. But then, can't we just go a little further and understand that there is a way to explain to a child or explain to everyone else, to the layman, that this person had powers beyond human possibilities, that he was wise. He was like the wisest animal of the animal kingdom. He had those big, big ears where once, go, once something goes in, it stays. He had those sharp eyes of a wise man. Can't we, can't, can't we just go ahead and understand that? Is it, is it required, is it required for literatures to say or to pass judgment on a whole civilization by saying that such things are fake. What the media does is different. What all the Hindu phobes do, do is different. All that, I don't, I won't discuss that here. It's just the question that, what does literature say? We just decide that whatever, whatever the uh, culture that we don't understand says is fake. Instead of looking at things a little more logically and understanding why that culture says that civilization has made those stories and why those stories survive. Ram Janmabhumi, Sri Rama, Ayodhya, Babri Masjid. This, this is the best thing today. Today uh, was a day for a literature to understand that mythology is a word that one should never use. Nah. Because they are all sacred stories. Stories that that particular civilization believes in. Unfortunately for the Greek civilization, the ancient Greeks, they don't exist to defend themselves. The Native Americans are unable to defend themselves because most of them are also being... Well, that's yet another story. But the Indian civilization still exists. The Hindus still exist. And we are able to defend our sacred stories.
we are able to say that mm -mm, those are not myths. Those are our stories. Those are our legends. Those are, those are stories that happened. And as time goes on, those legends were exaggerated or were explained in ways that people could understand. That that wonderful story of that great leader, whatever his personal life may be, you may accept it, you may not accept it, you may like it, you might not like it. It really doesn't matter. You might not agree with all the Sri Rama did. But one thing has to be accept accepted. He was a good leader. And not just was he a good leader, he was able to bring everyone together. Bring everyone? What does that mean? He was, to, he was able to bring Vanaras. Vanara. Human. Could they be human? That's the meaning of Vanara. So, slightly different than a human. Not a monkey. Or could be a monkey. Whatever. Okay? Their face was definitely slightly different than the normal human. But they were humanoids. So, not just that he was able to bring a little squirrel also to help in his, in what he was doing. Shabari was there. Guha was there. There were people of all castes, all creeds, all colors, all different uh, type of animals. He was even able to talk with the oceans. That's the kind of person he was. Someone, a leader who brought everyone together. He was a legend. He is a legend. And that legend came to us through stories, generation, generation, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. I don't know when he was, but he was, he was. So no, it's not mythology. They're sacred stories. Let's just keep it at that. And all oh, literatures of this world, please, let's, not use this word myth and understand that they are sacred stories and give them those stories the respect and those civilizations the respect they deserve.